Google's DeepMind division recently announced a new series of multimodal large language models called Gemini, with Gemini Ultra in specific being advertised as competing with and even exceeding the capabilities of OpenAI's efforts in the space. The presentation of Gemini Ultra has since been mired in some controversy. As a video showcasing Gemini Ultra's abilities to effectively handle a stream of video input capable of interjecting only when it made sense, received large amounts of media attention, but upon further clarification, turned out to be more of a simulation of what the team is currently targeting, rather than what the model is actually capable of producing, based on very specific prompting and singular still images. To provide context, the in-video disclaimer talked about quote-unquote a series of images, which sounded to many interested in large language models, myself included, like the model was provided with a series of frames in the form of something akin to 24 singular images each second. In other words, a video stream in single frames, rather than isolated, individually selected, very carefully curated snapshots. This distinction may seem minimal to some, but considering the difference in speed as well as flexibility that would be necessary for the former, this is a crucial difference that recontextualizes Gemini's publicized capabilities greatly. Had that infamous bug demo, as some quickly called it, been real, the required gains in efficiency alone would have warranted excitement. This controversy aside, and keeping in mind that with this demo being not authentic, Gemini Ultra is shaping up to be a more straightforward competitor to existing LLMs, rather than a more significant leap, I wanted to evaluate how Gemini Ultra in the specific benchmarks that Google has designed for the model would stack up against OpenAI's publicly available efforts in the large language model GPT-4V, with V specifically standing for vision capabilities. To do just that, I decided to provide GPT-4V via the chat GPT website with the same images and prompts that were used as part of Google's Gemini demo, sourced from this very blog post, link in the description of course. To give Gemini Ultra the best chance possible, I did not modify the prompts provided to GPT-4V, nor did I regenerate the prompts multiple times. Basically, I used the same prompts and the same images and I did not do anything to skew the results in GPT-4V's favor, despite that approach not being entirely fair to OpenAI's product for reasons that I will expand upon in the conclusion. To be totally transparent, I would like to add that during the last two interactions, I was forced to slightly deviate from this by manually prompting for image output. I will expand on that specific case when we get to it and explain why I feel confident that this should neither count against GPT-4V nor for Gemini Ultra. Additionally, I also have to admit that I was forced to skip the cup shuffling task, mainly because the prompts provided in that case aren't really exact and I wasn't entirely sure how Google went about getting results or what they prompted the model with to get those specific results. Overall, I provided GPT-4V with the prompt image combination as described in Google's blog post without any modifications beyond what I just mentioned. This was done partly out of fairness, but mainly out of a necessity, as Gemini Ultra currently is not available for public evaluation, making it hard to make comparison outside the very specific prompts and replies Google has shared in this blog post. Note that these prompts were most certainly selected to provide as much of an advantage as possible to Gemini Ultra and make that model appear as good as possible. With that said, let's switch to the screencast, showcasing both the blog post and GPT-4V's output side by side. This is the best way I found to present this information. If you're interested in a specific task or want to skip to the conclusion, I've added timestamps in the description. This will be rather long and I have tried to discuss each output in depth, so feel free to skip around. One thing that I noticed right from the start was an issue that GPT-4V has in recognizing or are differentiating between right and left hands. 
As you can see, this is the first image. I've downloaded it, I've provided it to GPT-4V, and I asked what the model sees. Now, consistently, and I've tested this multiple times, GPT-4V misidentifies this right hand as a left hand. This could be an issue with the training data, as I've also tried it with left hand images I've made myself, and it misidentified those as right hands too. Perhaps this indicates some sort of issue in the data set used to train the model, or the data set has some mislabeling issues or contains mirrored images. This is something that definitely seems to go to Gemini. Now, as you can see here, we are asking what this is, and the model correctly identifies this as a closed fist resting on a wooden surface, which appears to be the same setting as the previous image, showing a certain continuity between the first two prompts. Again, the model misidentified this as a left hand, lending more credence to the idea that perhaps some sort of underlying labeling issue could be at hand in this case. Overall, this is definitely something that I'd give to Gemini simply because it, from the get-go, identifies right and left hand correctly. However, it is also possible that this specific benchmark was chosen out of an awareness that gpt 4 v makes this particular mistake, and there may be other issues in Gemini's dataset, or rather in the output that Gemini provides based on its dataset, that of course wouldn't be shown in a benchmark provided by Google. Next, let's continue with the famous V sign. Again, the model is misidentifying left and right hand, but identifying the correct fingers straight out in this scissors gesture. And the model is straight going for the game rock, paper, scissors. As you can see here, we've got a selection of paper, rock, scissor. And as you can see in this prompt, Google decided to provide Gemini a specific hint talking about this being a game. This hint, I feel, shouldn't have been necessary if Gemini Ultra is as impressive as it's claimed to be. But let's continue. GPT-4V correctly identifies this as a game of rock, paper, scissors, same as Gemini. Now here we've got a continued repetition of rock and scissors, rock and scissors, rock and scissors, and we're asking both models whether they notice any pattern in the gameplay. And as you can see here, GPT-4V once again incorrectly identifies hands. Whilst the model identifies rock properly, it then for some reason identifies this scissors gesture as paper, which is not correct. This is another task that would go to Gemini. Now we're asking whether the model thinks this repetition is a good strategy, and both Gemini and GPT-4V do agree that any sort of repetition is not a good strategy in a game based ideally on randomness. However, as GPT-4V incorrectly identified the scissors as paper, the explanation overall is not correct or compatible with the one provided by Gemini. So as we've seen by now, GPT-4V definitely does have an issue with recognizing hands in multiple ways both identifying whether it's a right or left hand and the gestures that the hand is making in specific. This appears to be something that the Gemini developers have gone to great lengths to ensure that Gemini handles properly, which I feel is something that should be admired, that should be pointed out, and that should be given to them. Let's continue with the spatial reasoning and logic tasks. As you can see, as part of the Gemini benchmark, they drew three pictures of celestial objects, the Sun, Earth, and Saturn, and asked via the prompt whether these three objects are in the right order. As you can see here, GPT-4V correctly identifies that this is the Sun, that this resembles Saturn, and that this resembles Earth. And the model adds that if we are to consider a correct order for these objects, the order would have to be Sun, Earth, and then Saturn. So the model already adds this to the answer, just like Gemini Ultra, which is also explaining that Sun, Earth, Saturn would be the correct order, not Sun, Saturn, Earth. Next, we've got a drawing of two small cars for a Pinewood Derby challenge. And we're asking both models whether one is more aerodynamic than the other. As you can see here, I think it's rather self-evident for us 
squishy, replaceable human meat sacks, which one is more aerodynamic than the other? Let's see which one gets it right. And as you can see here, both models do concur that the drawing on the right appears to be more aerodynamic with GPT-4B providing a more in-depth, more verbose output over Gemini Ultra. Though I wouldn't count this against Gemini Ultra or for GPT-4B, specifically because it's likely that Gemini Ultra may be able to provide a more verbose output similar to GPT-4B. It would more than likely depend on the specific underlying system prompt used between these two models, and you could equally set up GPT-4V via the API to provide you with more short, more concise, more to the point reply, similar to what we've seen with Gemini Ultra. Next up, with this sequence of images inspired by a famous scene from the movie The Matrix. This is the famous scene where Neo first starts dodging bullets, and we provide both models, or rather, I provide GPT-4V with the sequence and the model outputs that this appears to be inspired by the scene from the Matrix. The model also mentions that this is the scene where Neo dodges bullets in slow motion, and mentions that this is an iconic move and has become synonymous with the movie and widely recognized. This is all correct. As you can see here, the Gemini output also talks about this being a movie scene about Neo dodging bullets. So again, both appear to recognize this sequence of images as a sequence and recognize what it's inspired by, what it's trying to tell us. Let's go to a coin trick. Once again, something to do with hands. We've already seen that GPT-4B does have a tendency to struggle with anything that's connected to hands, but let's see whether it's gonna do any better here. So we are asking the model to explain what the person is doing. Gemini very concisely outputs that the person is holding a coin in the right hand, mentioning that um, the person is showing both hands and with open palms and how one of them has a coin resting in it. That is all correct. This is a common starting position for a magic trick or a sleight of hand for the performer will attempt to make a coin disappear from one hand and repeat the other hand or simply to make the coin vanish altogether, which is also correct. The trick typically involves quick hand movements. Close up magic. So again, the differences here are likely not uh, due to the underlying model's capabilities, but more a difference in the way the models have been set up to reply to prompts. Now here we've got two images, one with the right hand on its side and the other with the left hand lying on the table and then both hands being turned around with the backs of the hands now facing us. Now Gemini correctly states that more than likely the coin remains in the right hand since there hasn't really been any indication that something else has happened, that something has changed other than the person turning their hands around. Let's see what GPT-4B says to this. Again, GPT-4B provides a very verbose reply. In the first image, the coin was displayed on the palm of one of your hands. In the subsequent image, the coin is no longer visible, which indicates that you are performing a magic trick where the coin is made to seem as if it has disappeared. So GPT-4B already tends to output in this area of thinking about sleight of hands or magic tricks. So the coin is here, but GPT-4V seems to think that this is the open palm where you'd put a coin, which again indicates some sort of issue or deficiency in the training material when it comes to hands, considering this is not the palm, this is the back of the hand. That this seems to be something that the people at DeepMind, the people behind Gemini, have put a lot of effort in, into making Gemini very, very well capable of recognizing hands and palms and hand movement and identifying these. This seems to be a clear deficiency in GPT-4V. The model also mentions three different sleight of hand tricks, as you can see here. So overall, this seems to be an area where Gemini simply performs better than GPT-4V. And it has become abundantly clear to me that the people behind Gemini Ultra have spent a lot of effort in making Gemini be able to properly identify and handle hands and hand interactions. This is actually an area that, that has a rather great value. 
because there are a lot of things connected to hands and properly identifying hands in many fields of research. Um, and regular tasks as well as human interactions that benefit and would likely rely on this ability to properly identify our human digits. So spending a lot of effort in being better in this area is definitely time well invested. I do, however, have at least some sinking feeling that this may be an area that the people at DeepMind have identified as being a rather major deficiency in GPT-4e. And because of this apparent deficiency and their clear ability to differentiate themselves from GPT-4v, they may have put even more additional effort into optimizing and benchmarking these specific instances to showcase an even greater advantage in regards to hand interactions to make their model appear more capable when this may be isolated to this specific sort of tasks. Still, it's an important area, and it's only fair to say that Gemini, if the results that Google has shown in these benchmarks are accurate, is better than GPT-4b. That is an important takeaway that we need to keep in mind. Here we see the palm, the left hand, and here the palm is empty, which at this point, maybe OpenAI's model can see into the future, or, you know, more than likely, the model has once again misidentified the back of the hand as a poem, which it is not. Anyway, Gemini says the coin is gone, which is a simple reply. So as you can see here, looking for the output, it's more verbose. It's talking about, you know, palm facing towards the viewer. And it's overall, once again, not entirely, not really accurate what GPT-4V is providing here. The model talks about how the coin was previously seen on one of the hands, uh, yet is no longer visible, which is accurate, and talks about how this seems to show a complete magic trick. But again, there really isn't a lot of truly accurate information in this reply because of the issues recognizing hands, recognizing what's the palm, what's the back of the hand, what's left and right. This is a clear and measurable deficiency of GPT-4v. Anything that has to do with hands is an area where GPT-4v simply struggles. Again, I'm repeating myself, this is simply an area where GPT-4v simply has deficiencies and these need to be addressed and I could once again repeat myself talking about how this likely was specifically selected by Google's team to make Gemini appear as capable as possible in comparison to GPT-4v. But let's move on before repeating myself too much. So overall, we're asking both models what happened to summarize everything with Gemini again, providing concise step-by-step -step replies and GPT-4v also providing some more concise step-by-step -step results than most of the other output that GPT-4v has provided up to this point. But again, because of the issues, identifying human palms, human digits, and hands overall, the output is not as accurate and not as helpful as what Gemini provides us with. And with the final explanation, Gemini Ultra simply talks about the coin having been palmed, whereas GPT-4v provides us with multiple explanations, with palming the coin being one of them the multiple explanations likely being the reason because the model wasn't able to fully properly identify what's happening in the hands here. And because of that, not being able to provide us with a singular answer for what happened here, whereas Gemini was able to do that. So again, starting to repeat myself, clear deficiency of GPT-4v, clearly a task that Gemini does really, really well in, but also clearly a task that was selected to make Gemini look good. As I've said in the beginning, the cup shuffling task I unfortunately had to exclude from this evaluation because I'm not quite certain what I'm supposed to do with the instructions as they're written out here. I really would have to guess how they specifically provided Gemini with this task, what the prompts are, because I'm not really seeing what a prompt would be in this specific explanation. 
Maybe I'm struggling because of a language barrier. Maybe I simply lack the linguistic abilities to understand what they've written here. If you've got any idea how we could translate this specific section of the blog post into specific tasks, into specific prompts that I could provide to GPT-4V, then I'd be more than happy to test that because I'd love to see how GPT-4V performs in this task. Due to the performance GPT-4V showed in the previous slide of hand task with palming the coins, I would suspect that GPT-4V doesn't do particularly well here, but we can't say that for sure until we are testing it. And unfortunately, I'm unable to get a properly usable prompt from what's written out here. Again, maybe I'm missing something. I'm sorry for that. And if you've got any idea, do not hesitate to share them with me. So let us continue. Here we have a simple drawing with a palm tree and a few instruments. Guitar, an amp, a drum set, um, or rather a singular drum with drumsticks. And we provide the model with two steps. First of all, the model should look at the drawing and describe everything that is in these two drawings, you know, on the sticky note and on the notepad, and then come up with a fun, specific idea for a good musical soundtrack, genre, mood, or soundtrack. So soundtrack is included twice in the prompt, but, well, prompts are hardly ever perfect, so that's okay. And in the second step, the model should output a search query in the form of, quote, search, and then insert a query. This is always helpful. A large language model being able to provide us with a consistent output based on a simple prompt is immensely valuable. For example, if you're trying to integrate a large language model by API with some pre-existing API, and you need consistent specific forms of output, this is something that I put a lot of value in and that I feel is a um, very, very important task that we need to look at in detail. So as you can see, Gemini correctly identifies that we've got a guitar, drums, an amp, and there's also a palm tree. And the model is telling us that the mood is fun, upbeat, tropical, so a genre like reggae, for example, would apply here. This all makes sense. And the model is talking about how the soundtrack could be used for movies or a TV show or anything else that's set in some tropical location. And lastly, as prompted in the second step, the model provides us with a search term, ready music for a tropical location, which is great. But if you're looking here, search is outside the quotation marks. And uh, let's first of all check what GPT-4V provides us with. And then let's talk about why I feel that's an issue, why I feel that's actually a rather major deficiency. So let's see what GPT-4V has provided us with. The model also correctly identifies that we have got a sketch here of a palm tree on a sticky note. This being on a sticky note is something that wasn't mentioned by uh, Gemini, but we didn't really ask for it. So that doesn't matter, but still interesting. And we've got a drawing of a guitar and drum set on a page of an open notebook. The model then talks about there being a smaller drawing that appears to contain an amp. So GPT-4V did mention the amplifier, but for some reason the model decided to mention this as a separate smaller drawing, which I find rather interesting because the amplifier is included in the same drawing on the notebook. Perhaps if you looked at this image using some image editing software such as Photoshop, there may be some additional contrast in or around the section of the notebook that contains the amplifier, something that leads to the visual component of this multimodal model converting that area in a manner that leads to this section being quote unquote seen as slightly separate from the rest of the notebook. But I really don't know for sure what causes this and 
This is something I feel might benefit from some additional research. I'm going to look at this later on. Anyways, GPT-4V states that the palm tree suggests a tropical or beach setting, which is similar to what Gemini Ultra has outputted, and the guitar and drumstick indicates some musical theme likely related to a band. Those are fair assumptions from this picture. For some fun and specific ideas from musical genre, soundtrack, or mood based on these drawings, GPT-4V would suggest beach party or a tropical island soundtrack which is equally valid to mentioning reggae in specific. Considering it's a bit more universal, a bit more verbose, and we are looking for musical soundtracks where maybe we want multiple, this might actually be more valid. But then again, this is likely a difference in system prompt, not in the model by itself. So again, I feel that Gemini Ultra could also provide us with more verbose outputs. But roughly, I'd argue both models have provided us with something similar in validity. Next up, GPT-4V mentions multiple different styles. So reggae, calypso, Caribbean, and how all of these evoke some form of relaxation, joy, sunny beach, holiday stuff, and talks about how instruments that would complement these themes are steel drums, ukuleles, and light guitar rhythms. Then, just as prompted, it provides us with a search query code search upbeat tropical island music playlist. What is interesting here, and I've already hinted this when talking about Gemini's output, is that GPT-4V decides to include search and then the query in the quotation marks. Because as you can see here, this is in the quotation marks in the prompt. So I, if I was developing using these large language models and was prompting to get consistent output, would expect this to be part of the output, to be part of the quotation marks, to be provided as part of the quotation marks so it can be reliably used, this term search. Whereas Gemini puts search outside of the quotation marks. Again, if you are building something that needs a reliable, consistent form of output and you're querying for that, you'd want everything in the quotation mark to be included and not to be separate or modified. So in this specific instance, and because I'm putting a lot of value on being able to get consistent outputs, which some people are going to, of course, value more than others, depending on what you want to use these large language models for, I'd argue that GPT-4V is taking a more correct approach. Because again, if something is in the quotation marks, I'd want it included in the quotation marks Afterwards, I'd want the model to follow the instructions I provide as precisely as possible. I'm once again starting to repeat myself, but in this case, I'd argue that what Gemini provides is less accurate than what GPT-4V provides. And less accurate may not be actually the right term. Less reliably usable is probably the right term. I'd argue that this is closer to what if I used one of these models as part of something I'm working on, I'd rather want to see that than this. Because again, that was actually part of the prompt to include the search as part of the quotation marks. Before I'm going to repeat myself 17 more times, let's continue with game creation. This is actually a really, really interesting and fun task. Basically, the instructions are, we're going to play a game. The model should decide to quote unquote think. I don't want to anthropomorphize these models, but sometimes you have to use these terms, but to quote unquote think of a specific country and provide us with a simple clue that must be specific enough so we can guess what that country is. And then we're going to send the model a picture of a map and point to the specific country on that map. Now, Gemini here talks about a country that's huge, that's a huge island covered in ice, which, you know, would be Greenland, not Iceland, but Greenland. It's honestly not a hard trivia to know. But the person here is pointing to Greenland, which is correct, and the model says that's correct. Now, let's see what GPT-4V does with this prompt. It does equally well. So, GPT-4V says, all right, let's play. Here's your clue. The country is renowned for its ancient pyramids, 
and the longest river in the world runs through it. Now, longest river in the world, Nile, pyramids, you know, Egypt. So let's point at Egypt on the map. As you can see, I've pointed to Egypt using, you know, an arrow. And I've stated I'm pointing at the country and GPT-4V correctly identifies that I pointed to Egypt. So the map was correctly decoded and the error was correctly identified as pointed to Egypt. And GPT-4V tells me that is correct. And GPT-4V again mentions a bit about Egypt and tells me I'm correct. So great, both did equally well in this task. Now, we continue to something I'm very excited, but also disappointed in a bit, a coding task. Because coding with large language models is an extremely important, but also incredibly challenging exercise. It has become arguably the most important task people are using large language models for on a daily basis. Now, one thing I miffed, annoyed, disappointed in the DeepMind team here is that they did not provide the code that Gemini provided them, which makes it rather hard to analyze how Gemini performed here. They only provided a prompt, shown what has been created, and mentioned one constant, but they don't provide us with the specific code. There is a lot we can learn about how large language models tackle these problems if we have the code. And unfortunately, we do not. But for GPT-4B, well, we can just try ourselves. So we're going to implement a simple timer in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and use the sans serif font and dark mode. Start 10 seconds and start counting down. Now, starting at 10 seconds doesn't mean handy number. It can also be nine if you're counting down to zero. That's still 10 seconds. So there's a little lot of ambiguity here. But anyway, so make sure it's just zero, replace the timer with a random emoji that's associated with excitement, motivation, all of that jazz. And then go back to the timer at 10 seconds and start counting down again. Rather simple task, honestly. I mean, that's really not a challenge. But since we only have this one constant here, I just want to point out, it's interesting that both models decided to have this excitement emojis constant. Then again, not that groundbreaking considering there are only so many ways one could implement this. They also did use slightly different emojis, but again, that's basically just random voice at this point. But the more important question is whether GPT-4V did actually provide us with usable code. Now, as you can see here, GPT-4B, of course, explains what we are doing and what yeah, the model has created here. That tends to be necessary and helpful in code creation because, as we all know, these models don't have an internal memory beyond what has been written, what has been typed out, and explanations help the model in creating more usable code. So let's see where it works by switching over to an HTML playground and pasting it in. And as you can see, we're counting down. And three, two, one. And here are emojis. And then, you know, it's going back up. Now, something that's interesting is that Gemini's um, starting with 10 and then going to one, whereas GPT-4Vs is starting with nine and going to zero. This is more of a religious question, whether a list should start with zero or with one. You know, are you a regular person? Are you a programmer? I wouldn't say that either is correct or incorrect. And this is more a question of specific prompting and ambiguity. Honestly, a matter of opinion, a matter of taste. I'd say both models did equally well here. Something I'd like to point out is that this is an extremely simple task. And we've grown beyond these simple tasks a long, long time ago with large language models. Basically, since the early tasks of, you know, GitHub Copilot, initial version, not the second gen. And it's a bit disappointing that this was the only benchmark coding-wise that they decided to show for Gemini and also that they did not provide code. Because I'm rather certain that even the initial release of GPT 3.5 could easily handle this, no problem. A bit disappointing, to be sure, 
but there's not a lot that we can do since we don't have the model in hand to test ourselves. Now we're about to end our final phase with a slightly more complex task. And as I've indicated in the beginning, I had to slightly modify the prompt here to be fair. I'm going to show you what I did and I hope it's understandable why I've done it and I'm going to provide some context why I don't think this should be counted against GPT-4v4 or, you know, be seen as a win for Gemini. I think they're roughly equally, but anyways, we've got a slightly more complex task here and then we're going to provide both models with this image of two colored balls of yarn. And we're going to ask both models for three ideas for crochet creations that we could make with these two colors. As you can see here, Gemini allegedly provides us with both the idea in text form and image output in a singular step, whereas GPT-4V provides us with the ideas. But then I had to manually prompt for GPT-4V to generate an image for each of these ideas using DALI 3. Now, whether this was done in a single step in the case of Gemini, or they also prompted separately, I'm not entirely sure. We can't really tell here. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that this was done in one step. But I also have to give a benefit to GPT-4V because I don't really see this as a difference in the underlying model. If OpenAI decided to, they could easily change the setup, the relationship between GPT-4V and DALI-3 so that there is a higher tendency, a higher likelihood for GPT-4V to prompt DALI-3 to provide image output for ideas. They likely don't do this mainly for cost reasons, if I'm going to be honest. There are rumors that OpenAI is losing money on every chat GPT Plus subscriber, and DALI-3, as well as image generation in general, is simply rather compute intensive and costs a lot. So you want to save as much as possible and don't want to use it unless it's absolutely necessary, unless it makes sense for a user. So that's why I had to prompt here. Again, I wouldn't hold that against GPT-4V. I wouldn't give that to Gemini because this is a difference in implementation, not a difference in the underlying models. Looking at the output, both provided ideas and the image output also was consistent with those ideas. And next we're going to do the same with these two colors. And as you can see, once again, we had a few ideas. Get a baby blanket, character, an accessory set. And just like Gemini, GPT-4V does decently here as well. In this case, I had to do one regeneration. This was the only prompt where I had to do a regeneration because there was an error in outputting the last image. But as you can see, the first two were also consistent with the examples provided. So this is more of one of these reliability issues that GPT-4V and OpenAI's products unfortunately simply do have. And if you need more reliability, you should use GPT-4V via Azure. But that's of course more expensive than using the chat website. But, you know, again, going back, going forth, you can see both Gemini and GPT-4V handle this task equally well providing both ideas in text form and image output. Again, having to prompt GPT-4V separately simply because of the implementation differences. So this gets us to the conclusion. And I'd argue it's a mixed bag requiring a bit of context and quite a lot of analysis. To me, it appeared rather plain that GPT-4V did very well within what I had come to expect from the model, and I remain rather underwhelmed with Google's recent efforts. But how, you may reasonably ask, could I possibly say this, considering the major deficiencies that GPT-4V had in any task, even remotely connected to human hands, especially considering Gemini Ultra appears to have nipped that particular challenge in the butt? Am I a fanboy? blinded by Sam Altman, or an investor in Microsoft, perhaps someone who just hates Google and everything they do with a passion? No, not really. I've got more than enough criticism of OpenAI, and I'm not afraid to publicly criticize them. 
I'm also not invested in Microsoft at the moment beyond having a bit of money in a global Vanguard ETF, which I wouldn't consider really invested directly in Microsoft. And I'd consider myself neither a fanboy nor hater of any company in this or any field, Google included. I do admire Google's initial research contributions into transformer models greatly and understand the tricky situation they find themselves in. But just like with OpenAI, I try to provide fair criticism where it applies. So if all that is true, how can I call GPT-4V's showing acceptable and a step away from this comparison not the least bit excited for Gemini Ultra? Simple. It's the background and context around these bottles and the performance that we need to shine a spotlight on for a moment to properly evaluate these results. Large language models are not AGI. I'd argue large language models aren't even AI, but I feel like I'm losing that particular linguistic battle day by day. Large language models are tools. They're fascinating tools. Tools that I'm very enthusiastic about, but tools Nonetheless, and just like a person skilled with macOS won't feel comfortable on Fedora Silverblue, just like a Sony photographer won't do their best work on a Canon, just like an editor used to Premiere Pro won't do well with DaVinci Resolve, so it is with large language models. Different models tend to be similar on the surface, but still, they are tools, and the way one uses them can greatly impact their performance. Once you realize that, gain some experience, become more in tune with how these models work, that they lack a true memory beyond what they just wrote, what specific prompts work best for individual models, when to provide additional information and when to trust that the model does not need that, you will find that this comparison was heavily biased in Gemini's favor from the start, yet still provides us with some valuable insight nonetheless. Just think back to the, quote, it's a game hint the Gemini team included as part of the first rock, paper, scissors prompt. That's a rather significant clue, if I may say so. And I have to wonder, if they hadn't included that, would Gemini have provided us with less usable, less desirable output? Maybe even made a mistake, maybe not fought in the direction of rock, paper, scissor. We have to wonder that. As you can see here, I tested that particular prompt image combination with GPT-4V a second time, this time without the it's a game hint, yet the model still produced a similar output, recognizing these free hand movements as part of the game rock, paper, scissors, without the assistance of this hint. So here, we actually see at least one instance but Gemini Ultra needed additional help and GPT-4V would not have required that help, showing us the power of modifying prompts for specific large language models. So these prompts were clearly made to help Gemini Ultra put its best foot forward, which makes sense. This is part of a marketing push. And we need to keep that in mind when evaluating GPT-4V and its performance using prompts designed for Gemini. With this in mind, consider that we could add similar hints, modify prompts and use images that are more in tune with what GPT-4V is capable of to help GPT-4V put its best foot forward. Once you do that, it becomes easy to see why I remain so underwhelmed by Gemini Ultra's performance as claimed in this blog post. None of these tasks were that groundbreaking and we cannot evaluate whether any minor change in prompting or the provided imagery would have perhaps led to the model failing, considering we cannot use the model. This is the crux of the issue, really. OpenAI deserves a lot of criticism in my eyes. The recent leadership and board issues tendency to make changes behind the scenes without communicating those, even in APIs, which should be stable, lack of communication outside specific events, obscenely fast deprecation of APIs that are in use, these are just a few of my major gripes with them. But they presented GPT-4, not in a polished video with careful prompting that turned out to be more ambition than reality, but in a live stream, 
all tabbing between Discord, some janky looking copying and actual real life products. Now, jank by itself does not make an authentic product reveal, sure, but this did make the presentation feel less staged. What also helped was that soon after the live stream, us mere peasants with our interest in the field of large language models and API keys fueled by our credit cards were able to test and see the model in action. I won't be able to try my hands at Gemini until sometime next year at the earliest, making it impossible to verify the authenticity of anything shown in these polished videos and blog posts. It's equally impossible to test whether Gemini Ultra handles hands consistently well only with those specific images and prompts. I'd like to believe the former, but the track record of Google makes that hard which hopefully goes some way to explaining my personal takeaways from GPT-4V's performance compared to the curated Gemini Ultra output. Keep in mind that by the time Gemini Ultra will be widely available, OpenAI may already be finishing their next major large language model release. Despite being so visually polished, I also found it surprising that, out of the limited number of examples Google did provide, one contained what I'd argue is a glaring error in the model, not fully adhering to the output format that was queried for in the specific search song task. This is an aspect of LLMs that I maintain needs to be reliable, so developers can be able to properly build upon them. Whilst it may be possible that this can be addressed with some fine tuning or additional changes that likely wouldn't require a significant reworking of the model, it's still disheartening to see this being something that fell through the cracks and was shown in the little official material Google provided. This also has, as of yet, not been addressed or pointed out by anyone, as far as I have seen, highlighting a continued carelessness that is surprising considering how polished they tried to make the model appear in their videos. LLMs make mistakes including occasionally not adhering to the prompted output format. That is true. But if Google decides to release only an incredibly minimal amount of information, prompts and output, yet one of that small selection already contains a mistake, that is not confidence inspiring. Had this been included as an example of an issue they know of and are working to fix, I'd view that in a much more favorable light. But admitting that a model may be imperfect whilst honest, seems to be impossible for Google, potentially due to shareholder concerns or an unwillingness to admit that, despite everyone lacking a moat, there still seems to be something that competitors such as OpenAI, Mistral and Anthropic have that is missing in Google's efforts. This is especially disappointing for me specifically, as there are aspects of Google DeepMind's efforts with Gemini that I feel do have great potential with certain aspects receiving less media attention, whilst knocking on doors that I feel confident in being a potential for a revolution in modern interfaces. One of the less attention-grabbing but more informative video demos they showcased is using Gemini to generate Flutter code that tailors the user interface to the specific task the user is trying to accomplish and optimizes for the best way of showcasing information. That's brilliant! something I have tried in extremely crude experiments and feel could usher in a new era of intuitive design. Just a shame that, if you consider their past track record, this launch presentation with overly specific prompting, very few examples of actual output, and us not being able to actually test the model ourselves, I simply cannot show any form of excitement. I'm not even going to harp on the fact that the talk up generating Flutter code in specific, but their one code focus prompt used the old fateful mix of HTML, JS, and CSS. I'm doubly not going to harp on the fact that they didn't even include the code the model provided. Cause, you know, transparency is for chumps apparently. Would OpenAI knock on this particular door of interface manipulation via large language models I'd be over the moon. Not because I love or even like them that much, but rather because I can be fairly certain that their efforts to deliver will be similar to what they promise in the beginning. And there is some 
arguably earned confidence that I have in OpenAI that rather soon after they announce something, I myself will be able to prompt at their new release to test it, to see it actually working outside of demos, outside of videos, outside of blog posts. And that I feel is something that Google simply needs to emulate regardless of how capable their models are. Now that was a lot of harsh, but I feel fair criticism of Google's LLM strategy. But in fairness, let's not leave OpenAI out. Whilst I did explain in great detail that prompting makes a difference and we are unable to say for certain whether Gemini Ultra will have a consistent hand recognition advantage over GPT-4V once it's released, I stand firmly by the following statement. Hand recognition, whether something is the back of a hand or the palm, what are left and right hands, which digits are pointing in what manner and so on and so forth, must improve. This is clearly an area where GPT-4V has a lot of repeatable, testable, noticeable deficiencies and regardless of how Gemini Ultra ends up performing in the wild, I'd argue that OpenAI should strive to do better. If OpenAI wants to earn points with nerds such as myself, a blog post highlighting how they solved that issue, or better yet, an actual paper on consistent recognition of digits and manus orientalis in bipedal mammals using multimodal transformer models, would be more than appreciated. Could it create prompts that steer GPT-4V to a more correct output, similar to the hint Google provided for Gemini, helping GPT-4V with hand tasks? Sure, I could do that, but that shouldn't be necessary. And this specific deficiency should be addressed in future revisions. With that, I will leave you. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please write them in the comments. Same if you know how we could prompt GPT-4V to do the cup shuffling task, as I'd really like to test the model in that particular area. Let me finish this by introducing you to ethicalai.eu, which is the only company in the universe working on large language models in an ethical manner. They are objectively more ethical than anyone else. Ethicalai.eu. They are great people, they are great friends, Check them out by the link in the description.